All right, new JCS, 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 new JCS. On the afternoon of June 9th, 2017, 26 year old environmental sciences student Ying Ying Zheng was traveling on a bus to an off campus apartment complex in Urbana, Illinois, where she was planning to sign a new lease for an apartment. She was running late and sent a text message. Dude, I'm not even posting. I. I I'm not even tweeting that I'm doing JCS nowadays. What's what's this about? Oh, finally Urbana, dude. A different place. Finally, not Canada. This is my hometown, yo. Yeah. Being a murderer in the Midwest is, I think, more understandable than most places. Yeah, I, I get it, too. This person literally died in my apartment complex. The FBI came to everyone's door. What the fuck? I'm bi, and you made me look up what bi-sitting was, and now I can't believe how obvious it is that I am bi. Love that. And then motherfuckers say... I'm, I'm like, bigoted and, and homophobic and shit. Like, it's so, so ridiculous, dude. Half the community, like, realizes things, not because of me, but because of other members in the community as well, more importantly than myself, and, and the way that they operate. Half Let's the people start. find out things about their own identity here and, like, realize that uh, they may be bi or whatever. Here and and there's still motherfuckers who are like, dude, you're you're homophobic, ego Andy. I mean, it's not like eleven months love you has hassle. I'm not saying I'm uh, I'm fucking awesome for this. I just think it's ridiculous that people will like turn around and be like, you're fucking homophobic, or because I make fun of like the LGBT flags, or not even the flags, but like the colors for uh, certain uh, groups. Like, what the fuck, dude? Chat, please stall for five minutes going for a smoke hassle. Bi sitting is a hassle. stereotype that comes from a place of acceptance and not hatred. Yeah, well, fucking, uh, clearly I'm not. It clearly, I'm not like shitting on uh, LGBT people and their existence Can't when I the fucking shit on the color schemes. Come. Love you has. Flags need some color theory and design concepts. Where are the dragons and shit? Anyway, let's get started. I'm waiting on purpose because I just uh, tweeted it out and I know that there's like JCS stands in here that are uh, waiting, you know what I mean? Fog. So here, tell your friends and family. Yellow and purple don't, do go together? It's color theory 101. No, yellow and purple do go together. I mean, look at the Lakers. I'm stalling on purpose. Sad. Before I watched you, I was confused on where I stood politically, but after watching your streams, you've helped me understand politics so much better. Thank you for the streams. Hassle. Thanks for the best four months. W in chat hassle. <laughs> Me when new JCS. I love that my one random like pocket Instagram story turned into a, a meme so quickly. Apparently there were people in my Discord that were freaking the fuck out thinking that there's some like crazy shit popping off. 
message to the leasing agent to inform them that she would arrive just after 2 p.m. After riding on one bus, she exited and tried to transfer to another, yet mistakenly waited on the wrong side of a street for boarding and missed it. She walked to the next bus stop a few blocks away at the corner of North Goodwin Avenue, where surveillance Stop, showed that a black Saturn Astra passed her by at exactly 2 p.m. It then circled back around and stopped where she was waiting at 2.03 p.m. She spoke to the driver for approximately one minute and then got in the car before it drove away. New JCS Hassel. The leasing agent sent her a text message at approximately 2.38, but received no reply. As the hours passed, Zheng's friends, aware of her errand and expecting her to return quickly, grew increasingly worried, and a missing persons report was filed to police at exactly 9.24 p.m. that night. The University of Illinois helped coordinate search efforts on... Bro, that dude looks like someone I know, I feel like. That's so on crazy. Around campus. He's a very familiar face. Yin Ying's family flew into the U.S., and a reward of $50,000 was offered for information leading to her whereabouts, but the local authorities received no leads. It was on the 12th of June, however, when the FBI discovered the surveillance footage capturing Yin Ying's last known That's location. They were Senate unable line. to discern the license plate number of the vehicle from the footage, yet they were able to determine that there were 18 four-door Saturn Astras registered to owners in the state of Illinois. One of the owners was 27-year-old Brent Allen Christensen, a PhD student at the University of Illinois who had graduated with a master's degree in physics and who had been married for four years to his high school sweetheart, Michelle Zortman. Investigators interviewed him on June 12th and inspected This is what I'm saying. This dude looks like someone I feel like I know. His car. When questioned, he reportedly claimed that he did not remember what he was doing at the time of Yin Ying's disappearance, but also stated he was most likely sleeping or playing video games. The police took his contact I'm from info. Champagne and was there during all this. I sold him alcohol at a liquor store literally two days before this happened. Dude, that's fucking crazy, dude. Why are there so many people connected to, like, high-profile murders? Anytime I look at a murder, there will be hella people in the chat like, dude, I fucking, I, I was there. Like, uh and he was released after just a nine-minute interview and a five-minute inspection of his vehicle. Two days later, upon reviewing the surveillance footage, investigators observed that the car's sunroof was similar to that of Christensen's, but more notably that the vehicle in the surveillance had a cracked hubcap, as did the vehicle of Christensen, and who at that moment became the prime suspect. He was called in by police in the late hours of Wednesday night, June 14th, requesting that he come in to discuss what they stated was an important matter regarding Yin Ying's disappearance. Christensen agreed, and an FBI investigator picked him up from his home and drove him to the Champaign Police Department at around 12 a.m. Dude, we got an Italian detective. Finally, some representation. Eric? Yeah, Detective Eric Stuyverson. Detective with the uh, University Police, okay. Um, we are investigating the disappearance of uh, Ms. Ying Ying. Um, because we are in my offices and it's late at night, I'm gonna read you your advice of rights, okay? Um, again, this is a voluntary interview, so at any time you're done, We'll drive you back home. That's the end of it. Um, yeah, drive so him back home. You spoke with my colleague, Joel. Um, I've, I've briefly been able to talk to him. We've been kind of running all over the state. Um, so if you can kind of... How do we know he's Italian? He said his, le his name is Anthony Manganero. What could that be? Give me a, a recap of, of what you told him. I would, I would appreciate it. Um, okay. Our... Investigation, as I'm sure Joel probably told you, is the disappearance of this woman, uh, this young lady, and uh, the most viable tip that we had referred to a black uh, Saturn Astra. Um, so, 
Uh, that's why he came to talk to you yeah. the other day. Um, do you remember what you told him? And I'm not going to hold you to it if there are certain details yeah. you forget. Uh, so they came... The suspect had just been read his rights and essentially made aware that he is now a suspect. Yet instead of confronting the situation and demanding why he is being put in such an uncomfortable position at such a late hour, he calmly accepts and responds in a non-adversarial manner. Imagine yourself in his position. You have nothing to do with this young woman's disappearance, yet you are being hassled and even accused by police in a passive yet blatant fashion. You would most likely demand to know exactly why you were being questioned in such a manner and exhibit some form of protest or objection at the current circumstances. They were just checking out all of the Saturn Astros in the area. Mm-hmm. I know it's a pretty rare car, so probably a short list. Um, yeah. He asked where my wife and I were during, I think it was two or three on Friday. And I mean, I graduated a couple weeks ago, so I'm looking for jobs right now. So, okay. I mean, I was either playing video games on my computer or taking an afternoon nap. So I was unable to purchase an alibi. I looked into certain things to try and see if I could get some kind of info for an alibi. I sent some texts around that time, but none exactly between two and three. He st- What the fuck? Bro. Hey. We know he don't we know he doesn't have a PhD in murder. Why would you say this, dude? Immediately. That's like the automatic self-report of all self-reports, dude. We are five minutes into an interview where he's basically like, Yeah, of course, immediately I uh started looking for alibis uh via text message. Would you do that if you were fucking innocent, dude? Yes? Bro, you would not immediately assume that they think you're the suspect and looked for fucking alibis, dude. Just because they're calling you in for a thing that you haven't done. Okay, but you wouldn't immediately assume that you're a suspect, chat. No. People are saying they read him his rights. Dude, he didn't know that they read it. He didn't start looking for an alibi via text immediately after they read him his rights. Stated that he was looking for texts that he may have sent during the time in question for the purpose of producing an alibi. Yet he was clearly unaware that police would later confirm that he was not playing video games at any point during the day in question either. Even when offline, digital forensics are able to uncover the exact time a game was played and how long it was played for, which is far easier to determine on a computer than it is on a video game. I know innocent people that need an alibi too. I would just be like, dude, this is fucking ridiculous. Like, I wouldn't be fucking looking for an alibi or looking to see if anyone could confirm immediately where I was I, until it got to a point where it's like, oh, shit, this is, they're straight up suspecting me. I wouldn't suss that they're suspecting me and then immediately uh, move to, to find I an alibi. The stream has weird. ...console like a PlayStation or Xbox. This wouldn't have completely refuted his alibi as the suspect was smart enough to provide two possibilities. The narrative that he could have been sleeping at the time would still have credibility. Um, I let them come in the apartments, they searched for stuff, I let them come in the car, they searched for stuff there, um, that was pretty much it. Okay. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, give my info. Uh, would you, uh, graduate in? Dude, I would literally, chat's like, would you let chat be your alibi? Dog, I would never be able to do a murder, Okay. Aside from, like, the morality of it, obviously, I would just never be able to get away with it. I'm always live, dude. Every single thing I do is monitored by, like, thousands of of freaks in the Discord and also uh, here in the chat. I love it, but also at the same time, you know, you can't really get away with... uh, Suspicious activity. 
We see you on late night Twitter horny. See, this is what I mean. This is what I fucking mean. I will like something on Twitter and immediately it's like a, a wall of Haas mods. Like I can't even be horny on Twitter without like 500 people uh, uh, criticizing me. If you're more than an hour late offline or start putting your face on milk cartons and shit. Yeah, literally like, oh, he's probably dead. Oh shit. He got kidnapped, dude. Oh fuck. He's not live at 11. Oh five. Oh no. He's literally kidnapped. Uh, masters in physics. In physics? Yes. Well, that's way smarter than me. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that's over at the U of I there. Yes. Okay. Um, you said your wife was out of town. Um, yes. The guys mentioned something about Wisconsin. Correct. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. You guys are originally from there? Or is yes. That, okay. Um, do you know what day Just she was uh, in Wisconsin? Just got my parasocial site, um, Cassie. Like late Thursday night, early Friday morning until Sunday evening. You mentioned that you thought you possibly sent text messages between you know, the hours of two or three, so you weren't able to find any. Um, That's correct. Do you, do you recall um, any text messages you sent that day, or like, whether Oh, yeah, there times? were one. I, I actually left, I, well, I didn't, they didn't look through the phone, but I was trying to text on my phone. Okay. Like, someone sent me a text at like 1.30, I responded at like 3.45 or okay. something like that, so. Um, I feel like he's just, he's adding something like that as a sentence modifier. But it feels like he knows. Murder time has bog. He feels like he's very certain about these time frames, you know? I just, I wouldn't remember any of this um, shit. There are texts around it. Yeah, but not, maybe not. Not it's exactly between specific. two and three. And that's why I think I was probably lying down and sleeping, just because, like... You know, especially now, I'll typically do stuff in the morning, look for jobs, play with mm -hmm. you, and like, you know, I like them to sleep, yeah. wake up, respond. It definitely fits. That okay. Way, so. um, was that kind of pattern of kind of looking for jobs, um, kind of having a little relaxation after graduation, was that typical of the, the entire week prior? Looking for unfamiliar patterns in both the suspect and the missing person's behavior is routine procedure in a missing person's investigation. The question is posed to the suspect in a delusive manner, as anything he says at this point will not be taken at face value. The investigators will be relying solely on forensics and witness statements to determine any shifts in behavioral patterns during the week in question. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. It's... Um, do you remember specifically if you sent any applications out online or if you visited any places on uh, Friday. throughout the week um throughout the week uh i haven't had any in-person interviews i had a phone interview on thursday and anything on friday okay do you have any questions for me before um um why am i under suspicion is it just my car or is there anything else? Uh, I mean, that's, you know, a large portion. Uh, I mean, it is uh, a very unique car. Um, like I said, our search warrant is, uh, is just you for the car. Yeah. So we can, yeah. you know, um, look into it. We can, of course, see what we can find. And of course, you could also turn around and exonerate you completely. I mean, I'm talking about a very rare car. Yeah. So, um, the suspect cannot be detained at this moment and has just showed the first sign of contention. The first direct confrontation is yet to take place and detectives will always plan for it to be initiated by them. For this reason, the lead investigator switches the suspect's focus to a less confrontational matter in order to put him at ease before the first confrontation begins. The detectives want to induce anxiety in the suspect, but it needs to be done at the right time to have the most advantageous effect. Uh, how long were you at the U of I? Did you undergrad there as well? No, I did my undergrad at UW Medicine. Okay. And I came here in 2013. Okay. I was initially in the PhD program, but decided I didn't want a PhD, so I just kind of left with the master's. Got it. Um, Not a doctor, chat. I like the campus. It's all right. Not too bad. It's all right. 
Uh, do, you, do you meet your wife there? Or? No, we uh, actually grew up in the same hometown, didn't really know each other until end of high school. So we both moved to Madison when I went to undergrad. And moved here. Cool. Do you have any uh, questions, sir? Hang man. Yeah, the, uh, when we were talking about uh, Friday, yeah, this guy's taking a back seat. They're not even doing the good cop, bad cop technique here. He's just like, they're doing the, <laughs> they're doing the good cop, uh, the hog top. He's just kind of sitting back. Any question on the night, uh, the night. Can you remember, you, you said that you played video games all day on Friday? Yeah. Is it just between the time period that he's asking about or just literally all day? Literally all day. Um, at the moment, not really hanging out with too many people or talking to too many people. Um, my wife and the girl I talked to, um, she's busy. My wife is out of town, so it's like, well, I'm alone today. So, uh, yeah. It's just you didn't, you didn't do a cruise in campus or anything? I did on Saturday, but I mean, getting a little stir crazy, just decided to go for a yeah. drive on Saturday. But did um, you go out to eat or anything? Go any places? No, I didn't go out to eat. Whenever two investigators are conducting an interrogation, they will always decide which one of them will be initiating the confrontation beforehand. Experienced investigators are often Damn, I was wrong. familiar enough with nonverbal cues that even a slight pause or look will be enough to signal the start of the encounter. Let's go, boys. Good cop back on time. The hog cop, as you noticed, has changed his stance from a vertical one to a stance that is ready for confrontation. You can tell that he's ready to initiate. No, that we didn't bring you all the way up here to talk about video games. And once you had for lunch, that my day, base, I spunks you yeah. off. Why do you think that we brought you up here? Because the car I own was seen picking up a girl that's missing. The confrontation is initiated in the form of a question and a suspect is put on the spot. Instead of responding to the confrontation with a confrontation of his own, which is a common reaction for a truthful subject, he tries to give a justifiable reason as to why he is being questioned without acknowledging the severity of that same element. He's trying to avoid the confrontation. Yeah, damn. So who was driving that car other than you on, on Friday night? Friday the, the ninth. It's it, you're driving your car on the ninth. Orange. Does anybody else have access to that car? No one has access to that car. Okay. So how many sets of keys do we have in that car? Two. And where were they on the Friday? Uh, one. I would have had one. My wife would have had one. And hers were in Wisconsin, right? Yeah. yeah. And what do you keep on that keychain? You keep both sets of keys, right? One for the Camaro, or do you have separate sets? Um, I have one keychain, but sometimes I take the Camaro keys off of it. So. Now, let's talk specifically about Friday. Okay. okay. You went to school for how long at the U of I? Since 2013. Since 2013. Yeah, so since you're very familiar with our campus? Not really. I never really, um, talked to anyone so, so you're kind of a loner here is an example of an officer yeah. using the going horizontal technique but specifically on that day okay when you you originally told the agents that came to your apartment that you just played video games all day long you didn't leave the apartment yeah but it's fair to say that we know that that's not true correct why would i what play? Nine months, happy birthday Wait, to our sub baby. Has. That was the big whammy, dude. <laughs> it's fair to say that we know that that's not correct. Then, I mean, you're just basically just saying, yeah, that's your alibi, but we don't believe it. Maybe there's some misunderstanding why, why we're here. Because, like I said, we're 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 not just looking for a needle. The sand will never in a haystack. Sense, so I want to I'm sorry, let me take that back. We are looking for a needle in a haystack. Yeah. But my point is, you're, you're making it sound like we're just, we're, we just randomly came across your vehicle 
of the 1400 asterisks that are in the state of Illinois. I have so video. so so what would have happened that day that brings us to you? Probably that I live in Champaign. The suspect once again refuses to acknowledge the severity of the confrontation and offers a justifiable reason as to why he is being questioned in such a manner. I mean, I've been He's low key doing all right. This is Champaign University police kidnapping plus homicide doesn't come by every day. An astro. So Okay. Well, believe me when I say that the full weight and force of the FBI is going to descend on that vehicle. Okay. And all that tails. Okay. I mean, he's sorry. I should have clarified. He's doing all right for a dumbass who hasn't called a lawyer. Because if he was doing all right, he would have called a lawyer. And he absolutely would not be having this conversation. He's, he's doing all right for a guy with no fucking alibi and no lawyer in the situation. Where he's like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. You just like thinking that it is irrational for them to suspect him is perhaps the only thing you can do. In a situation. Right now. My primary concern and why I've been out till midnight and these guys have been out till midnight every single night is we're trying to find this girl. It's raining outside, it's nasty. She's a foreign student who's only been here for a few weeks. I want to find her. I'm asking for help. I know. I... I mean... I've got her getting into your car. I need to know why. Okay, I take it back. That's not very good. <laughs> this is called the uh, technique where you just don't have a response, so you just go like this. That's fucking terrible. He should have immediately been like, it's not my car. Unless someone stole it. Not my fucking car. And then suspiciously brought it back or something. I was playing video games. There's Brent, I need, I need to know why she's getting into your car and I need to know That's where cool. she went. If we could help her, we need it done now. Because we need, we need to move on from this. It, it's been like six days now. I don't know what Sorry. And you've been at the U of I for how long? Three years. Three years. And that you know what we do. I work in the Detectives Bureau at the U of I, and you know what we have access to. Cameras. Do you think that we're not going to track a vehicle all over campus? We control kiosks to bus stops. We can look in buses. We can look in every building out on the streets, and you're telling me that I didn't see you driving your car on Goodwin, that I didn't see you driving down Wright Street and turning on right in front of parking where everybody pays their tickets and driving down University to Goodwin and heading south. And then you see her standing on that corner in that shade tree, didn't you? That's where you first saw her. And then you turned, you turned on Clark, and we still have cameras. I've seen the videos, but I didn't see me. You've seen what we've allowed you to see. Can I see the stuff that you're talking about? Do you think that we brought ah! you up? Oh, dude, do criminals always do this? Bro, murderers literally always do this. It's such a... Like normally I, I, I would consider it to be weird, but it's so fucking consistent with every murderer that literally goes, can I see the evidence? It's like, what are you going to do, bro? What are you going to do? You, you're going to fucking see the evidence and be like, you're going to debate your way out of it and be like, oh, actually, that's not me. Like, why would they give you that information right now? 
When a big part of what they're trying to do is and catch you in a fucking you lie. Your Verge article yet? Like, do you think they're gonna assume? Oh yeah. Oh, here you go. Oh wow, that is me. Oops. Like, is that why? Is that why any fucking detective would do that? Up here to show you video. We want to. We want to understand why you did it. Yeah. We want to understand why you stopped there to pick her up. He's trying to call the bluff if they are. It's it's not even a bluff half the fucking time. And it literally doesn't matter, even if it's a bluff or not. Like, they're not going to give you that shit. Every single murderer always like, can I see it? Can I see the evidence? Like, why? How would that be an advantageous position for the detectives in this situation? Was it to give her a ride? Are you afraid to tell us that you gave her a ride? Maybe you wanted to make a couple bucks as an Uber driver, and she told you I had to go get, I had to go sign a lease at One North, and you're like, oh, I know where that's at. I'll drop you off. If you're afraid to tell us that you gave her a ride someplace, we can work with you there. A familiar technique that has, dude, they're always they always do this. It's like, come on, yeah, like we have the evidence. Just tell us, just give us like a shit Jesus. alibi, dude. Just go on your just go back on your previous statement and and so we can fucking lock you up they always do this and i feel like if you're innocent and you've given a fake testimony you are so fucked like you're going to jail has no official name but is widely recognized and routinely put into practice the detective is essentially trying to get one foot in the door by aiming for a lower level of you're not jcs trust stop trying to analyze the situation Are you dumb? Are you stupid? I'm literally a streamer. You can watch this video on your own, you fucking idiot. Also, JCS isn't some like profound, brilliant criminal analysis. Like, he's just some guy, too. Initial admittance. He is aware the suspect is unlikely to provide an outright confession, but more likely to at least acknowledge that he was driving the car that picked up the victim, and even more likely to do so when afforded an exit strategy. He is also given a justification as to why he has been reluctant to divulge this information up to this point. You will now see the suspect start to physically shake as his mind races back and forth as to whether to take the bait or not. But I know that you picked her up. I know you did. I saw you in your shirt, arms fully extended. Got him. I was not wearing a shirt that day. <laughs> Where did you drop her off at? She was looking for a ride. She had missed her bus. She told you she was going to One North, so where did you drop her off at? Got the horses in the back. Oh, no. Oh, no. There it is. There it is. Got him. Before that, I don't think they had probable cause to, like, further investigate him. I, or maybe they did, but that would be fucking hard to, like, to, uh, uh, to, to get a search warrant and, like, look at his uh, PC and stuff like that. Okay. Put the evidence on the hubcap. Sure they did. Huh? I thought I drove around on Saturday. I did take a girl. Oh! I don't remember oh! Her. Okay. I saw her picture. I don't Speed I run, dude! Do you remember Sub 20 run, boys! It's a wrap, dude. It's a wrap. It's done. It's done. It's over. The girl's name that you picked up? No. She was talking very broken English. Okay. Four months, my good. Tell us you about what fucking happened. idiot, what dude. I mean, luckily, he's a fucking idiot, and he got caught. What an idiot, dude. Early afternoon. I don't really remember. Okay. I was just driving around. Um, I saw a girl, and she was very distressed. Okay. So I stopped my car and looked at her. 
the pastor, she needed help and talked to her for a little bit. How much? I gave her a short ride to the box. Okay. She freaked out and got out. Okay. That's all it was. Was this when you got on the north side of the railroad tracks on Goodwin? When you went across the university and you drove on north? I was this is why he could not fucking be a PhD, boys. That's why you don't call him a doctor. That's why he just has a pathetic master's degree. I say this as someone who only has a flimsy undergrad education, obviously. Please, no master's students get mad at me. I'm just kidding. Okay. Let her out Bro. by the hospital or by the railroad tracks? Or where did you let her out at? I don't really remember specifics. Um... Was it close to where you picked her up? Yeah, it was relatively close. It was in the residential area. Okay. So I'd never really been over there before. I had no reason to. Okay. Oh man. When you say she freaked out, what did what did she do? Did she did she start throwing things at you? Did she scratch you? It looks like you have a scratch on your right bicep there. Is that oh, from it's... So she just freaked out. So she's sitting in the front passenger seat of your vehicle? Okay. Has anybody else sat in that front passenger seat since she got out of the car? Probably. Um, okay. Not with me, but with my wife, probably. I mean, so other than your wife, who, who else sat in the front passenger seat with you that you know? Um, maybe a guy she's hanging out with. Your wife? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't okay. think this was her. I, uh, and, well, and I if it's if it's her, her not again, okay. I want to find this girl because I know she's alone and scared out there, and we yeah. don't have any contact with her. So you said you picked her up. Yeah. You went a couple blocks away into a residential area. You remember if you went north? I went north for sure. Okay. I mean, I know my current directions. Yeah. Same. Okay. So you went north. So that, that was relatively close to Lewis. So. All right. To to where? It was relatively close to Loomis. I'm so Loomis? familiar with that okay. area. And she said something like, turn left after a couple blocks. Um, maybe she said something else, because that's really when she started freaking out. And she wanted to get out of the car, get out, try to pull in the door. It's locked because I put the car out of locks. Mm -hmm. I'm locked and she got out. That was it. Where were the streets at? Do you remember? No, I don't remember. Do you remember what she was wearing? No, I don't. What was her ethnicity? You said she had trouble speaking English. Well, well she, she was Asian. Asian. She was Asian. She was Asian. Okay. Um, what was? What do you think? How old do you think she was? Was she, Do you think she was a grad student, undergrad? Was she? Um, my guess was about twenty. I guess it was about 20. Um, her hair length-ish, kind of here. Um, uh, I have trouble telling Asian people apart from one another. And he's racist, dude. We got him. Lock him up at least for the racism. Do it! Sorry. Well, you were no. never... Do it! Lost fire. Lock him up! For this very specific though, because when you pulled up to her, you rolled your window down, and she leaned into your car, so you were looking right at her face. And what did she have on her face? What did she have on her head? You were looking right at her. I don't remember. You don't remember? No, I mean, even, so I taught many, many semesters here, and a lot of the students were Asian. Okay. Was she wearing glasses? Did she have a ball cap on? The detectives continue to inquire over the missing person's appearance in the hopes that the suspect will give them an accurate response. If they can ascertain that the suspect's memory is clear enough to accurately recollect what clothing an individual was wearing at a particular time, it will enable them to cut through claims of a poor memory when inquiring into separate matters that occurred during that same time period. If the suspect is guilty, it would be in his best interest to continue to assert that he can't remember. He has already stated that she was Asian and had poor English, yet these general details are far easier to remember than particulars, such as specific articles of clothing, which detectives are now trying to trap him with. She, she might have been wearing glasses, I don't remember that. So. 
What did she tell you whenever you rolled down the window and you were chatting with her? You said she looked distressed. Um, That's when I stopped. Do you remember specifically what yeah, uh, she said. said to you? Um, I asked her if something was wrong. Um, Which would she say to that? Uh, she said, I'm late, I need to get somewhere or something like this. I was not exactly out of it, but just kind of like, oh, I'm going to help this random person, so I'm going to help this random person. Um, so she said she was running late for something? Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you be right, because again, I was just turning around. Mm -hmm. So. Did she say where she was trying to get to? You mentioned the. Um, Show me the phone. Uh, with the mask. She said she had a meeting with her professor. When I told her my name, she didn't really hear it, so I had to say it again mm -hmm. a few times. So, I mean, her English was really bad. Um, maybe I wasn't speaking properly either. Yeah, I mean, we really didn't talk about much. There really wasn't much said. I just she looked freaked out, so I got her right. So how, how long do you think that she was in your car for? Less than five minutes. Not Less long than at all. Five minutes. Not long at all. There's just a few blocks and I apparently took a wrong turn compared to what she said and that was enough to spook her. I don't know. So when you crossed the railroad tracks, did you turn to the left or to the right? I don't remember railroad tracks. So you said you kicked her out of the car in a residential neighborhood. She got out of the car, I did Oh, she got out of the car? She wanted to get out. Like, that's why I let her out. Oh, because she was freaking out? Yeah. Okay. And she was saying because things you didn't understand. Because you, uh, she, she thought you took a wrong turn. Yeah, and sometimes, I don't know, something like that. So, yeah. And she tried to open the door, but again, it was locked. Because my car auto locks. Um, Obviously, when I get out, I'm not going to keep someone I barely know in my car who just want to be in there. You know, I don't know the girl. Um, so they're up. That was the last I saw her. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, um, I would have told this earlier, but I mean, I thought it was Saturday. I just um, again, I was driving around a decent amount beforehand. I don't remember exactly where I was before. Yeah, we, some, you were definitely driving all over campus, and you were by yourself, and you weren't playing video games all day. So why would you tell us that? Why would you tell the FBI that comes to your house that I you were Saturday? Saying, I don't, I mean, didn't accept the days. I mean, I thought I was doing it Saturday. So what did you think that those two agents were at your house talking to you about when they came over? Friday. That's why. I mean, Friday is a day? Or Friday, or they're there to ask you if you picked up an Asian female and gave her a ride. About Friday, I mean, they were asking me about Friday between two and three, so I told them. I mean, maybe I got my days mixed up. You know, I said a little bit ago, I thought I was doing this Saturday. But you didn't bother to tell them. Oh, I didn't. I played video games all day Friday, uh, uh, detective. But I actually did pick up a female on Saturday. You you didn't feel the need to give them that information. And it might be important. People I mean, agent. The lead investigator makes the mistake of interrupting the suspect during a direct confrontation. He is understandably getting impatient and is at this moment more focused on gathering pretext for cross-examination at a later stage. All right, so you go northbound through university. Where do you go next? Do you remember? I turned left. So it looks like I did go past, past university. Um, I'm going to ask a personal question. Don't take it the wrong way. Is um, you, know, you, you mentioned your wife went on vacation with another friend. Um, you mentioned that uh, there's another guy she hangs out with. You mentioned there's another girl you hang out with. Do you guys have a we're no, we're very a relationship? relationship? Okay. Yeah, I have a girlfriend. She has a boyfriend as well. Okay. Um, it is exceptionally dumb to have admitted that you picked up an Asian woman because once you fucking do that, like, and the FBI have already have has already come to your house to ask you questions, like, like it, it's over.
It's so fucking stupid. It's so incredibly f stupid that he's just like, that he is, uh, that he's just suspiciously going to forget to mention that he picked up an Asian woman maybe the day after the day that they're looking for. Sorry, I only compartmentalize my experience by days. If it's not literally on the exact day that you're asking me for a question, then yeah, I'm just not going to bring it up and not remember it. Yeah, good shit. Some kind of strain between us as well in an unrelated way. Because it's not just the relationship, it's just a strain. So um, I, I, every marriage goes through some rough patches. Yeah. True. Um, yeah. I mean, how, how long has that been going on, that, that strain? The detectives are now building a foundation for the reframing technique. The fact the suspect has been going through a rocky marriage will now be afforded to him as a justification for the crimes he committed at a later stage. A few months, a few months. I mean, I mean yeah, I mean, I didn't tell her that I did this because I was scared that, I mean, well, great now, this is happening. Did she go to Wisconsin with a boy or another girlfriend? Guy. Did that, how'd that make you feel when she went away for the weekend, this long weekend with that guy? Lonely. Yeah. And it's okay, those, that, those are normal human feelings. Yeah. Did you feel hurt? Well, yeah, but I mean, she's been seeing that for a while. Um, but still, she's your wife and it's tough, you know, even if you're in an open, relationship like that where it's tough to see somebody you care about that you love to go someplace else with somebody else and not include you. Yeah. And I get that, man. Is that why you were driving around campus all day, pretty much all day long on Friday? Because you missed her? Just trying to clear my head. Yeah, I'm lost. That's understandable. Yeah. And I'm stir crazy. I was lonely. Um, yeah, I thought it was Saturday. Did you talk to any other girls that day? No. Did you talk to any other girls on Saturday? Or did you stay home Saturday? No. Once again, days mixed up. Okay. Yeah, yeah but, uh, uh, I'm not trying to trip you up on the days. When I was driving, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in a clear way then. When I was driving around, she was the only person I talked to. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Do you remember what time you started driving around campus that day? The suspect was driving around for over two hours before he picked up the victim, which was used to assert the argument that he was premeditating an abduction. Do you remember driving off campus in Urbana, into a residential neighborhood in Urbana? In Urbana? If I did, it wasn't that far. So were, you, were you in Orchard Downs? Orchard Downs. Where all of our married student housing is? There's a large Asian community that lives out there. Are you driving around Orchard Downs? I did go to Orchard Downs for a little bit, but there was construction, so I turned back. This was used to assert the argument that not only was the abduction premeditated, but he was specifically targeting a female of Asian ethnicity. So you were cruising around campus a bit, um, trying to clear your head. Yeah. Uh, your wife was up in Wisconsin with her boyfriend. Um, while you're cruising around, you. Saw Miss Ying Ying. Uh, she appeared very distressed. Okay. Is that correct? If it was her, yeah. I mean, again, I don't. If I recognized her, I would have told the agents that came on Monday or Tuesday, whenever it was, that it was her. Okay. Like, because I knew she was missing. Um, I picked up an Asian girl. I thought she was about 20. When she said she was distressed, uh, or you said that she looked distressed, what did, what did she say to you when you rolled your window down and talked to her? Um, she said she was late for something. Other than that, did she, did she tell you what, what it was? She or said where she was had at? a meeting with her professor. Again, my... Um, Not great name either. My theory is that she didn't get out of the car. Just be 
came up with him. My, my theory is she was in there a little bit longer. The lead detective is now using the same technique as the second detective used earlier to gain the initial admittance from the suspect. He doesn't directly accuse the suspect of abduction, but is trying to gain further admittance past what the suspect has already acknowledged, being that he simply picked up and dropped off Yin Ying after she panicked. Um, I'd like you to be more forthcoming with me because again, Take my business box. We have 600 Chinese students that have volunteered. Bro, this guy, literally fucking, the only part of the equation that is missing here is that he comes out as a libertarian, okay? Looking for Asian women, personally. Uh, there's definitely a fetishization element there. Um, fucking, he's, he's a cuck. And he wants to take out his anger potentially on his, uh, you know, uh, on, on um, like a random Asian woman. Straight up. Makes sense. Kind of like this ad break at the top of the hour. Which is coming regardless. No matter what happens. You might uh, run from it, but the ad break still arrives. This, my entire apartment is is covered in gray smoke currently. Holy shit! Okay, here's the ad break now. Fuck. To look for her. What I can tell you is that we will find her. Now, when we find her, is up to you. Because you know, and we know, that she didn't just get out of your car. So we need to know where she is now so that we can move forward from this. But if you maintain that she just got out of the car and walked away, it's very difficult for us to move forward. Were, were you hoping for um, just kind of like a quick tryst with her or see if, you know, trying to, trying to pick her up? I mean, that would have been nice, but... Uh, uh. Do you, do you have, I'm gonna ask you a weird question, and you know, a lot of us have fetishes. How would you describe your relationship with your wife? Are you guys into certain things? Do you like porn? Do you like? Um, we're pretty vanilla together, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. We have some stuff in our apartment. I mean, do you have like certain types of people that you have fantasies about that you might want to hook up with? You know, not particularly, no. Oh, is that be, well, I'm just about to take Okay. I mean, have you ever like, um, you do realize like everything you tell us, we fact check regardless of what you tell us. So yeah, like stuff like uh, YouTube videos that you've seen, regarding Asian women. Do you like videos of Asian women? Like Korean women? Like K-pop songs and stuff? I mean... Maybe. I like, okay, so I like all types of women. Okay. And that's, that's the truth. So, I don't have an Asian fetish. But something drew your eye to her. Because you, you, you were cruising all over and yeah. If she was truly distressed, I mean, there was an e-phone stand right behind her. She could have pushed that button and, and got help. And she didn't ask you for help, per se. She asked, she needed to get to, she was late for something. Yeah. And that's, so you offered to give her a ride. Mm -hmm. No. You're a smart man. You have a PhD, right? Masters. Oh, you still got out of the PC. You're still a smart man, is my point. So you have to understand how technology works. Any gamers in the chat? How do you think I knew that she Googled the address to One North? How do you think I knew that? One minute yeah, after getting months. in your car, how do you think I knew that? We know that you did. she didn't get out of your car. 
you need to be honest with us. Help us put this to rest. Help us bring her back to her family. You can do that. You can do that. You can do it right now. I understand if you've had dark thoughts. I understand if you've been, been depressed. I understand if you've been drinking too much at times. I understand if you've had sadistic thoughts, wondered what it would be like to commit an act of violence. I know that temptation is out there. I need to find her. I know she got in your car. You know, Take my there. filthy base, nice money. You've been depressed. Your wife just left to go on a vacation with another man. You see her, she gets in. Mob check her she's hand. vulnerable. Mob check her hand. Let me find her. I think I told you. Okay, so did she get back in your car then? No. Did you get out of the car and follow her? No. Definitely not. I didn't get out of my car single time. Well, why not? Was it because of the kind of neighborhood you were in? I don't know anything about that neighborhood. So. Did she run away from you? Did she stand there? No, she stood there. Looked at her phone. And I drove away. Did you? Were you attracted to her at all? We didn't want to know. Well, she's a good-looking girl. Did the thought cross your mind? Yeah, the thought crossed my mind, but I probably haven't with anyone. I mean, maybe she's into that. Is my point. And I'm not. I'm not judging you. If she got in your car and she wanted to have, go to another location, you guys have a. Have some fun, roll, roll around, have sex, consensual sex. Something happens. You panic. Is that a possibility? You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. So you're telling me you never had sex with her? I never had sex with her. Never penetrated her with your fingers? Any, any parts of her body? With no. your penis? No. With your fingers? No. Never had sex. Did you kiss her? No. Okay. Are you afraid? Are you afraid to tell me if you did? Because it, it seems like you're you're trying to think instead of just answering the question. You're trying to think about. Three steps forward, well, like where I'm going with it, and I think I've demonstrated enough. I've shared enough with you that you know that I know okay. that I you didn't. you didn't drop her off in that in that neighborhood. You you know that we can follow her phone. Okay. So where did you drop her off at? Where'd you take her, Brent? The suspect maintained his innocence and was released without charge, but was immediately placed under surveillance at the completion of this interrogation. Four days later, the FBI reached out to his girlfriend, Tara Bullis, who agreed to wear a listening device and attempt to get him to open up about Yin Ying's disappearance and his potential involvement. This arranged strategy turned out to be a total success, and Brent Christensen was arrested on June 30th, exactly two weeks after his interrogation. Fucking got him, dude. An FBI agent testified that Brent Christensen girlfriend fucking got him dude and became a key part of the case when she agreed to record conversations she had with him in the weeks following ying ying zhang's disappearance a total of nine recordings came from that at first he denied guilt and told her everything would be okay but then on june 29th after a night of drinking he described killing zhang in detail Investigators say the final recordings were made the day of a memorial walk and concert for the missing Ying Ying Zhang, an event that Christensen actually attended with his then girlfriend. What he didn't know is that girlfriend was wearing an FBI recording device. On the walk home, the two began to talk about the crime. I cut her clothes off and just started doing stuff to her, he said. 
Earlier in the conversation, he said, she was resilient. I tried to choke her to death. Hey, he was complaining about not getting fucked. There you go. Your, uh, your, your girlfriend fucked you again, or your wife fucked you again. Just one that last time. Death, but she didn't. I choked her for what must have been 10 minutes. Then I released her, her breath. I couldn't believe she was still alive. Christensen said he hit Zhang in the head with a bat and stabbed her, and she was still alive, so he decapitated her. Prosecutors say the recording showed that Christensen bragged about killing 12 other people, but they have no other evidence of more victims. Ying Ying is the only person that has produced evidence that leads back to me. Number 13, he said, I've been at this since I was 19. He told his girlfriend he had been wanting to talk to someone about it and he wanted to kill more people. I still want to do it, he said. It's my legacy. And as if this has not been hard enough for Zhang's family, fuck? some of them were in the courtroom today. Zhang's father kept his eyes closed during that recording. Christensen was mostly expressionless. His defense team has tried to paint him as a man with mental health and substance abuse issues who does not deserve the death penalty. The trial continues next week. That's when you know the legal team is like ready to take the L. <clears throat> Makes sense. They got him dead to rights. It's like, dude, please don't murder him. Like when the legal team's like, all right, fuck it. Like, yeah, life in prison. We got it. Please don't murder him. It's a step toward justice for Ying Ying Zhang. The man who kidnapped and killed her is guilty. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. A jury took less than two hours to convict Brent Christensen of abducting and killing Zhang and lying to the FBI about it. She was last seen June 9th, 2017, getting into his black Saturn Astra on the U of I campus. Christensen faces either life in prison or the death penalty. Brent Christensen, the convicted killer of Chinese scholar Ying Ying Zhang, will spend the rest of his life in prison because a federal jury couldn't decide if he should be sentenced to die. The judge certainly didn't mince words in his final statements. CBS 2's Tara Molina is live in the newsroom with more on that decision tonight. Sick Tara. Freak, dude. Erica and Brad, this is, the, this is the same jury that found Christensen guilty of kidnapping and killing Zhang. They couldn't come to a unanimous decision on the death penalty. And the judge certainly didn't mince his words. In his final statements to Christensen, he said, quote, the mercy extended to you by this jury is a testament to their humanity not your character. Brent Christensen is currently serving his sentence at the Maximum Security Statesville Correctional Center in Illinois. Despite the FBI recordings, he maintains his innocence to this day. The body of Yin Ying Zheng is yet to be recovered. What? What a fucking piece of shit.